Hi everybody, it's Matt. Hi. Wow. Live streaming. Fun stuff, right? There we go. Hi, it's Matt. I'm from National Parks at Night and I wanted to share with you a new series that we're doing. Um, when we come out with blog posts, they're easy to read. Sometimes they're videos. Most of the times they're not. We take a lot of time to craft them and write them. So. What we're going to do is we're going to take some of these topics and explore them more fully uh, live streaming on the web here. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into uh, what we did this past weekend. Uh, this blog post is about how to test your lenses for coma. Yes. So let's do this. All right. So. This blog post basically starts out saying, you know what, when you get a lens, especially for astro landscape photography, you're concerned about some things, right? Is it going to be sharp? Is it going to have good color? Um, and then since you're getting super wides, usually, uh, let's say, you know, like a 15 millimeter or 20 millimeter, and it's fast, like a 1.8 or a 2 or 2.8. Sometimes it has an aberration called coma, C-O-M-A. Not to be confused with chroma, C-H-R-O-M-A, which is color. Coma is an aberration that some people don't really care about and other people do. So what we want to do is teach you guys about what it is so you can decide for yourself if it's something that you care about. So here it comes. A little bit more of this. All right, so this is comatic aberration that we're going to talk about. The first way that you can see what coma is, is when you zoom in, let's say well beyond one to one, let's say four to one, you might see something that looks like this. It doesn't look like a star. No matter how well you focus, it doesn't look like a star. It looks like an odd shape. It doesn't look like a pinpoint image, right? And we, when you're making a short exposure like this, which is a star point exposure, you may find that it might not be recognizable on screen. Let's say when you're showing your images, let's say on the internet or on Instagram, right? But when you make a print or you project them, it becomes amplified and more apparent. So. The other option is when you see star trails happening, you see some of them sometimes are fatter and that was where the coma was because it makes a larger than the star point shape, right? So it makes this fat bright line that really draws the eye because it's bright and it's large. So that may affect your enjoyment of making star trails too. It's not just star points, right? So. Now we're identifying what coma is, right? So, um, so why does it matter, right? Uh, well, when I first started getting into astro landscape photography, I was just really glad that I could take pictures of the stars. It felt good. It was like, wow, I can see the stars. I can see the landscape. This is fantastic. I'm really delighted. As you level up, you start to care about some things more and other things less, right? Uh, so at some point I just, I found out that I really cared about the shape of the stars in the corners, right? And that may take you a couple of years to get to that point or never, but at some point you're going to say, I'm going to start paying attention to this. So Lance really brought it to my attention and then I started looking for it and I started seeing it and you know, you can't unlearn it once you've seen it. Sorry, I might be infecting you with knowledge. My apologies. So coma often occurs, occurs on wide, fast lenses. Um, the most common culprits are lenses with apertures of f2.8 or wider, right? So this image was very carefully constructed for sharpness. Uh, the previous image was shot in a Fuji X-T1, great camera with a seven artisan 7.5 millimeter fisheye. It's a fisheye lens, folks. It's going to have coma. You can't expect it not to have coma, right? That was that first example that I showed you. This is the Viltrox 20mm f1.8, 
which I find to be a very sharp and delicious lens, native Nikon Z mount lens. I shot this for star points with Starry Landscape Stacker in mind. So I shot 25 images, all at NPF duration. Uh, let's see what that was. So the exposure information is down here, right? So that's 13 seconds each. And then I stacked the sky using that method where I took 25 pictures and they got aligned and they're all sharp. If I had coma, it would have exacerbated that problem at the corners and you would see it there, but it was really tack sharp. And then I took one longer exposure for the foreground and blended them together. So this is an example of a lens that has very little coma and I was stopped down to 2.8 from 1.8, which eliminates it. And we'll learn more about that as we go down. And this is just a good example of coma not being as present as it could be. So let's go a little bit further down. Uh, coma is, uh, let's see, coma is, it's, it's, it's something that, that we all need to decide whether we, we care about it or not. Um, we can stop down to eliminate coma, right? If you're starting at f2.8, that's a problem because 2.8 is allowing a certain amount of light in an f6400, which is great for start points, right? You go to f4, you might have to bump your camera up to 12,800, which with the Z6, I really don't care about because it's great on the high ISO there. Other cameras might not be so lucky as to have great extra high ISO noise. So um, you might want to start with a lens that's faster than 2.8, like an f2 or an f1.8. Um, yeah. So an alternative is to test your lenses. And that's where we're getting to the heart of the matter, right? So if you are considering getting an ultra wide lens for astro landscape photography, you should rent it and you should test it. And this whole process will breathe life into your understanding of how to test the lens and identify whether it has unacceptable chromatic aberration or not. Um, one side note, the Nikon 14 to 24 F 2.8 is such a classic night photography lens because it has very little to no coma, especially at 2.8, which is where it really matters. The Irix 15 millimeter F 2.4 also extremely amazing lens regarding coma and sharpness. Um, both of these are F mount lenses. And right now I'm on a quest to replace all of my F mount lenses with Z mount lenses. So that's why I took a bunch of lenses out into the field and started testing. So I'm also going to start making some more prints this winter. Uh, I just got a new printer and it's going to matter a lot. So investing in lenses that are not going to have known aberrations is important to me. So how did I prepare for this test? Well, uh, paper and pen is a really wonderful way. I drew a grid in a notebook and I'm going to show you here. So I started this grid where I had each of the four lenses across the top. So I have the Samyang 14 millimeter, the Laowa 15 millimeter, Viltrox 20 millimeter, and my Zeiss 15 millimeter F mount lens, which is my go-to for years. And then I listed all the available F stops down the left. And why did I do this? Well, these particular F mount lenses I was testing do not have electronic lens mounts. So I had to write down the file names for each of these exposures as I shot them. And I also went through both of the NPF calculations, which we find in photo pills. So for 14 millimeters, the NPF calculation is 9.97 seconds, which you could round up to 10, but then you might be, you might be blurring a tiny bit, you know, that is the accurate setting. And then there's the default setting, which is 19.93. I shot both of them because I wanted to see the difference between default and accurate MPF. So now I have them for comparison. For what I showed on the blog, I only use the accurate settings, which is what you would use if you were going to make gigantic prints. So it is by the math, the sharpest exposure duration if you nailed your focus. So as I went through each of these exposures, if there is nothing I could do, I wrote NA, because this Samyang starts at f2.8. I w wrote in this file number, then this file number, then this file number, and then I couldn't do those two, and then I did these three. 
at the NPF settings. Now, how did I do that? Uh, I'm trying out a new intervalometer, which I think I'm going to keep, and I love it, the Fotix Aeon, which allows you to go to the tenth of a second instead of just whole seconds. So now I have this nifty new tool that allows me to do really accurate exposure durations for NPF exposure durations. All right, moving on. So what are the four lenses that I tested? Let's go take a look at them for a second. The first one is the Samyang 14 millimeter 2.8 lens for Nikon. The second is the Venus Optics Laowa 15 millimeter F2 Z mount lens. Uh, the third one is this Viltrox 20 millimeter, which is something that I own right now. And the Zeiss Disagon 15 millimeter, which is also something that I own. So those were the four lenses that I took out into the field to test. And thank you BNH for sending us the Samyang uh, and the Venus Optics for testing. We really appreciate it. So what did I do in the field? Well, I waited for a new moon and out in Catskill, I just drove out about 15 minutes towards the mountains and it was dark enough. Um, now there was some light in the distance and that was tactical. I decided to do that because the street light gave me something exact to focus on. So I would zoom in and I would make sure pinpoint that that was in focus and the, this guy over here and that the stars were in focus. And I took these four shots. I took this shot before I decided to take our pointing straight up shot. So each of these are the four test shots just for reference so that I knew I nailed the focus. So that was step one. Find something you know you can focus on that's in the near horizon. Um, we already talked about the NPF calculations, which I got from PhotoPills. And then, so I made test shots all the way up to f5.6, which is about where coma starts to disappear. And you're pretty much beyond what you would use for star points anyway, because you'd be eliminating so many stars at that point. The notes we covered after you take a picture, turn on your flashlight, write down the file number, and then I took all the pictures. Funny enough, state police stopped by while I was shooting and they said, are you okay, sir? And I said, yes, I am. They asked me what I was doing. I said I was testing lenses. They said, good luck. So we even have this, the seal of approval from the state of New York state police. Thanks guys. <laughs> so here are the results. Let's get to the nitty gritty. And I posted them here on the blog for you guys to look at as individual slices. I made all of this in Photoshop after going through in Lightroom, just so you guys could see it. I'm going to open up the PSD that I made so you guys can see it. This PSD, I actually put in the link in the blog post. So if you want to download it and really pixel peep, I left all the layers in there. Uh, so now we can zoom in even more and we can really start to see what's going on, right? First thing we have, let's talk about the grid. Across the top, we have our f-stops, 1.8, 2, 2.8, f4, and 5.6. If you see nothing, that means I couldn't shoot it. This lens, this Samyang, is a 2.8 lens, so of course I couldn't shoot f2. So that's why you don't see anything in the grids over here. And then it says corner, edge, and center, right? So corner would be Let's go back to the blog post for a second and we'll take a look at a picture. This is not the picture. The corner would be right up here. The same place every time I found the same place in the corner, right? The edge would be over here. Left edge, dead center. I did it by the numbers, right? And then the center is pretty easy. It's dead center in the middle of the, of the image. So now we can take a look what I did was I did 100% crop for each of these squares that you see here. These are 100% crops. And then I zoomed in to 800% so I could get as much of a star as possible to show you what the difference is. And we can zoom in even more and start to really find out what coma means. So there's two things going on in this example here, right here. 
The color is chromatic aberration. That can be fixed. In Lightroom, I can move a slider under the lens corrections and make the color become neutral. It's not a concern. I didn't change it for this. I wanted to show you neutral results. The shape of what used to be the star is concerning. That is coma, C-O-M-A. So now we have this chromatic aberration in the corners. And it's pretty easy to see that f2.8 f at f4 and at f5.6 in the corner, coma, coma, coma. Right there, stop. Hard stop, dead stop. For astrophotography purposes, this particular lens, I could test more, but I didn't. This is a no, because I don't want my stars to be that shape. I'm not even really going to look hard at what else is going on, but you can see at the edge, you also have coma, 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 all the way to f5.6. Doesn't work. And then we have, you know, pretty star shaped stars in the center. That's to be expected. That is the sharpest place for a lens, is dead center. Okay, moving on from the Samyang. Next, we have the Laowa 15 millimeter. So, this lens is an f2 lens so at f2 you'll see a whole bunch of readings down here right whereas with the samyang we didn't have that so now we have this stuff in addition to and the cool thing about having a lens that's faster than 2.8 is you've got that extra stop when you need it but you got to know if it has weaknesses so there we go first thing we see and i'm going to zoom in here First thing we see is a bird shape. That is a fantastic bird, right? And then it starts to become better. It's, it's, it's better. And then it's cigar shaped and cigar shaped, right? To me, this is way, way, way more acceptable than these shapes that we had on the Samyang. You see the difference? These shapes are a lot more star-like. And if you look at them at 100% in these star fields in here, it's hard to tell, right? It's hard to tell. But when you get up here on these guys, they definitely get blobby. And that's when you can tell the difference, is when they look blobby, that's when they start to turn into star, fat star trails when you do long exposures. So what do we have here? We have a lens that is um, better than the previous one we looked at. That's the Laowa. The Laowa is better than the Samyang when we're talking about coma. Here's my, my, my safe lens, the one that I've counted on for four or five years now. This is my Zeiss Distagon F2.8 15 millimeter lens, F mount. Uh, so I got a surprise. I knew it had a little coma, but look at that. At F2.8, I've got some weird bird shapes and it doesn't disappear really at 5.6. 5, 5 and at the edges, I've got this sort of Star Trek communicator shape. Um, and in the center, oops, in the center, it's sharp, sharp as a tack. Beautiful, right? But now that I'm pixel peeping, I look at my Zeiss and I compare it to the Laowa, and I think the Laowa has less chromatic aberration than my Zeiss. Boy, was I surprised. Uh, and then the last one is the Viltrox 20 millimeter. So let's see, I expected. So this, this one, I'll zoom out a little bit. This one, you gotta keep in mind, goes to 1.8. The only lens in this group that's that fast, right? So I have a 1.8 column here and an F2 and a 2.8. Watch this, at the corners, crazy bird shape at F1.8. Corner, F2, crazy bird shape, 2.8, almost gone. Pretty amazing, right? So same thing happens at the edge. So who cares at 1.8 and F2, it does that. At F2.8, it's gone. Coma is gone. They did an amazing job with this. So I'm really glad uh, that this was a sound investment. This Viltrox is an incredible astro landscape lens and I'm, I'm also glad because I use it all the time for vertical pano stitches. 
So I set my camera vertical and I stitch across like this. So I know that when the edges overlap, I'm going to get coma free areas. And that's, that's going to help my stitching every time. So if we zoom out, we see this whole thing. You're welcome to pixel peep and download it at the end of the blog article. Um, yeah. So those were my findings. Um, so let's say, so I took all these shots. I did all of that 800% zoom. We looked at it as promised here in the blog post. You can see download the test images. Um, and this was my decision at the end of this, I decided that I'm going to buy the Lawa. Um, it's a lot smaller than my Zeiss Distagon 15 millimeter lens also, um, which is to be expected because we're going mirrorless after having a, a DSLR lens. Um, and it has a, a threaded filter mount, which my Zeiss also had, but the, the filter mount is smaller so I can potentially get smaller filters when I need them. Um, yeah. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, if you guys have questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, we would love to talk with you about this and help you sort through your coma. Um, I just wanted to share with you guys some other stuff uh, before we go. We are on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We'd love to see you there. Uh, and also here on YouTube. Uh, we would love to see you guys uh, subscribe and hit the like button and be fantastic for us because we want to make more content for you and you got to let us know when we're doing the right thing. Um, and also, please visit us at nationalparksatnight.com. Um, our main mission is to help people become better night photographers in precious outdoor spaces. And we have a whole bunch of workshops all the time in 2020 we're going some amazing places many of them are sold out uh, other ones and when i say sold out you should join our wait list because inevitably somebody drops out and if you're on the wait list you have a good chance of getting in if not there's a handful of workshops for 2020 and 2021 including easter island that you can get in on and come with us on and that's it. That's all the time I have. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the comments. My name is Matt Hill. Peace. And have a good day.